Hi guys, Ronnie from 499. Guess where we are? We are at Mobile World Congress coming to you live from the Windows event of Microsoft. So as you can see, there's a huge building here, the Hotel Rey Juan Carlos, and Microsoft has taken up the entire building and there's a big Windows billboard there. And there's also something to describe about all the Windows tiles here. We can see cars, uh, home automation, uh, Xbox, phones as well. So yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at what Microsoft is going to announce at the Windows Phone or Windows event at Mobile World Congress 2014. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh, we're happy to have all of you here. It's a pleasure for me personally to come back to Mobile World Congress. I think I missed the show last year. The first thing that we're going to announce and talk about today, which is a new update coming this spring for Windows 8.1 that focuses on three specific things. Um, the first is, we're investing in a bunch of UI changes specifically to improve the experience for non-touch users. And I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of that in a minute. Um, and, you know, this follows from the customer satisfaction data I described before. We could see where things were going great, and we could see the places where we could improve things for our customers. And so focusing on mouse and keyboard was one of those. The second, as we look at the hardware devices that are coming to market, um, we knew that we needed to give our OEM partners more flexibility, in particular to reach low price points. So we've increased generally the flexibility in the hardware requirements for Windows, as well as done technology work to help us get to more price points, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then last, we focused on uh, some particular customer segments, enterprise and education, where people are really looking for improved management and better compatibility with things like legacy websites and ID. So that was the third focus for us. All of these things will be part of an update that all of our users will have available later on this spring. So let me talk about these in a bit more detail. Um, the first, I want to talk about um, the UI changes that we've been trying to make here. And there are a few things in particular, um, you know, if you all have used Windows 8, if you've used it both on a touch device and on a mouse and keyboard device, then hopefully these will ring as familiar to you. Um, let's, let's imagine for a moment that I have a Windows 8 tablet, and I'm holding it in my hands like this. And there's a number of things that are very natural to me as a tablet user. If I want to quickly do a search or quickly change my screen brightness, I simply swipe in with my thumb on the right, you get the Windows Charms bar, you get settings, all these things that are incredibly convenient. Users love that. Or similarly, let's say I'm holding my Windows tablet here in my hands, and I want to switch apps. We have great multitasking that people like. I can swipe in with my left thumb and flip between apps, or I can pull in an app switcher on the left and quickly and easily switch between apps. So for touch users, those modes of operation work great. Unfortunately, though, if you're a mouse and keyboard user, and in particular if you're familiar with Windows 7, some of those touch affordances we found weren't really quite tuned as well as we could do for those mouse and keyboard users. And so we saw people experience a bit of frustration sometimes with things <coughs> popping up from the side. We found people weren't aware where they should look for certain things in the UI, and those are the things that we've really tried to improve with this update coming this spring. So, in particular, um, we're adding things like a search control, a power button, and settings to the start screen. Because if you're a mouse and keyboard user and you're unfamiliar with the charms bar, when you go to start, you'll find those things where you have expected them classically, and now they're quite discoverable for those people who don't have touch. We've changed the UI for standard things like the right click of your mouse. When you use your mouse pointer on the start screen in Windows and you right click on a tile, we'll show you a context menu. That's more natural for what mouse users expect, although it's a little less rich of UI compared to the app bar that we currently show on the bottom of the screen. The momentum is ours. We've overtaken BlackBerry become the third major ecosystem. 86% of the major apps before every month. And we're gaining market share every day. It all started when we set out to create a better way, to challenge the old guard and imagine something new. An experience inspired by people. An experience that gets you closer to the things you really care about. It's the smartphone reinvented around you. Reinvented to be the world's most personal smartphone. 
featuring live tiles that get you closer to the people and things that matter most. Reinvented with software that's turning heads and winning admirers. Reinvented with hardware that's making headlines and gaining followers. Reinvented with meaningful innovations like the best low light camera and an industry leading 41 megapixels of zoom that ensure nothing else comes close. And the reinvention continues in 2014. More innovation, more personal, more apps, more windows connected across all your screens, more enterprise features, more phones, more sizes, and more price points, so innovation is affordable. A Windows phone is always evolving, just like the individuals it's designed for. Windows phone, reinvented around you. If you look at this phenomenon around the world, it's sort of interesting to see the places where it's happened. And it's easy to forget that Windows Phone wasn't even in a bunch of these countries a year or a year or more ago. We focused on getting higher-end hardware. We supported the Qualcomm 8974. We supported large, high-definition screens, so we got our first tablets. And um, we added end-user features like rotation lock and driving mode. So most of these updates have focused on growing the general scale opportunity around the world. We've been working with Facebook, testing out their implementation of Facebook Messenger for a while. I've had the good fortune of using it and, and you know, chatting with folks at Facebook. It's looking good and we will have it for all our customers soon. There are a number of other great apps that are coming which I am not at liberty to announce today. A lot of our partners like to announce their own apps. So stay tuned as you hear about more great, uh, compelling, demanded user, uh, user demanded apps for Windows Phone coming over the next few weeks. This is not actually a phone that comes to market anywhere. It's, a, it's phone hardware that we've been working with Qualcomm I've been carrying this phone around because for me here in Barcelona, dual SIM is a great experience. I have my home AT&T SIM in one slot, and I have a local Movistar SIM in the other slot. So I'm using the local data, but my wife, I still get my text from her when she texts me on AT&T. Um, this device is also running the Qualcomm 8x26 part, and it's, a, it's part of Qualcomm's work to create hardware reference designs that can be really easily brought to market by OEMs if they decide they don't want to do a lot of modifications to the design. And it makes it easier and more straightforward for hardware OEMs to get these things going. So who are the names? And this brings me to my third piece of news here. You know, clearly we'll continue to go deep with these giants that we've continued to work with with wonderful phone experiences. But when we start to think about people with global footprint and incredible Chinese market strength. We see Joni, Lenovo, JSR, Longchair, and ZT who are collaborating with us in this new Windows Phone engagement. We have new partnerships with Carbon and Zola, incredible India strength and our ability to build phones in India support. LG, a global name, all very familiar, career-based company collaboration. We're very, very excited to continue, you know, relationships and partnerships in this space with them. And finally, Foxconn, the world's number one ODM and someone who is already starting to engage with us in this process. So together, just these partnerships alone represent 56% of the world's smart <coughs> working and collaborating with them in this new capability.